Belgium is the location of the European Union's headquarters. It is known for its excellent chocolate and beer, and until recently, it had the highest ranking national football team. Considering its small population of less than 12 million people, Belgium has defied expectations and excelled in various fields. Now, it is set to lead the way once again in a groundbreaking endeavor that has never been attempted before. Belgium is currently constructing the world's first energy island, a revolutionary infrastructure project that will revolutionize energy distribution in Europe. It may sound familiar if you've been following tomorrow's build, but this time, Belgium is taking the lead. Denmark had plans to build two energy islands, as we discussed in a previous video in 2021. But progress has since advanced significantly. Belgium's North Sea neighbors are on the verge of achieving this feat first, partially due to an exceptionally clever construction method. Before delving into the details, let's provide a brief explanation for those who missed our previous video or just need a refresher. An energy island is an artificial island located far offshore. In this case, 45 kilometers away from the Belgian coast, equipped with advanced electrical infrastructure capable of handling high voltages. It allows the generated power from nearby wind farms not only to be transmitted back to the shore, but also to other hubs and countries in the region. As more energy islands are built, they contribute to the creation of an interconnected electricity grid. The European Union has ambitious plans for offshore wind energy, aiming to reach 300 GW of installed capacity by 2050, despite the current capacity standing around 16 GW. When this goal is achieved, energy islands will play a crucial role in efficiently bringing all that power back to the mainland. The first ever energy island, named Princess Elizabeth Island, named after Belgium's King Philip's daughter. It will have a size equivalent to about 12 football pitches. Its construction will involve concrete cations filled with sand, and it will feature a small harbor and helicopter platform to facilitate access for maintenance crews and other personnel. One might wonder how electricity and water can coexist, given their usual incompatibility. Let's start by examining the process of construction the caissons, which will be prefabricated on land. During the construction process, the specialized factory plays a vital role in assembling the caissons in a meticulous and well-organized manner. The process is divided into five stages, with each stage focusing on a specific component of the caisson's structure. It starts with the base slab, where a sturdy foundation is established to support the weight of the entire structure. Gradually, the walls of the caissons are erected, followed by the construction of the roof, ensuring a robust and secure framework. Once the concrete used for the construction of the caissons is fully cured and gained its strength, they are carefully transported to a temporary storage facility. This step is crucial as it allows for proper coordination and planning before the caissons are transported to their designated offshore locations for installation. Meanwhile, the pre-construction dredging phase begins at the selected site, ensuring that the area is prepared to accommodate the caissons. To ensure the stability and longevity of the energy island, a ship is employed to lay the foundations for the caissons along the perimeter of the island. This meticulous process involves positioning the caissons precisely according to the predetermined layout, adhering to engineering specifications. The careful placement of these foundations sets the stage for the subsequent stages of the construction, ensuring the stability and integrity of the energy island. This comprehensive approach in the construction process from the meticulous assembly of the caissons in the factory to the strategic laying of the foundations at the construction site demonstrates the importance placed on precision and engineering excellence. These steps lay the groundwork for the successful realization of the energy island, enabling it to withstand the challenges of its offshore environment and fulfill its role in revolutionizing energy distribution. You're not mistaken if you notice a boat named Simon. It is indeed named after Simon Stephen, the Belgian mathematician who invented the decimal point. After Simon completes the seabed preparation, the caissons are transported by tugboat and gradually lowered. Starting from the south side of the island, anchors and winches are used to position the caissons, which are then filled with water to stabilize them. Once all the caissons are in place, a dredger starts pumping sand into the island, filling approximately half of its interior. 
the pumped sand is compacted and a concrete batching plant is installed on the island, while additional sand is continuously pumped in from the other end. Following that, rocks are transported by boat in order to establish the harder's boundary. A robust concrete wall will then be constructed atop the caissons to shield the island from powerful waves, wind, and potential flooding. Subsequently, the concrete plant and other construction equipment will be dismantled to make room for electrical installation activities. The construction of the island is commissioned by Elia Group, a prominent electricity transmission company in Europe, with design and construction tasks undertaken by a consortium known as TM Edison. Once completed, the energy island will unlock the potential of a newly planned offshore wind zone in the North Sea region. It will have a capacity of 3.5 gigawatts, which is sufficient to power approximately 3.5 million households. Additionally, there are plans to utilize the energy island as a hub for establishing new undersea connections with the United Kingdom and Denmark. Speaking of Denmark, their energy island project is still progressing, but it is expected to take a few more years, likely until 2030. However, it is crucial to note that it is not a competition to be first. The ultimate goal is to promote the sharing of renewable energy among nations and facilitate the transition away from fossil fuels. Therefore, Belgium and Denmark have signed an agreement to interconnect their energy islands once they're operational, emphasizing the importance of collaboration rather than competition. Implementing these energy islands could potentially lead to a reduction of 4 megatons of CO2 emissions annually. Germany and the Netherlands are also exploring the concept of constructing their own energy islands, which may become operational in early 2030s. If all these projects proceed as planned, Europe will take a significant step towards establishing a fully interconnected power grid within the countries surrounding the North Sea within a decade. Furthermore, there's a possibility that these endeavors could serve as an inspiration for nations beyond the region to adopt a similar approach in the future, encouraging the widespread distribution of renewable energy that should involve the participation of everyone. Now that concludes our visit to Belgium Energy's island paving the way for a new era in energy distribution. Stay tuned for more cutting edge construction innovations. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.